morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is taken from Numbers chapter 11. If you'd like to follow along, you'll find it on page 116 of your Pew Bibles. Numbers 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the Spirit rested on them, they, put, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Magad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, El Dad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put this spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 15. You'll find it on page 442 and 443. Three hundred few Bibles. I'll read the odd verses. If the congregation would please respond with the even verses. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me go to shame, or let my enemies cry over No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your youth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from my own. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore we exhort the sinners in my ways. He guides the humble in what is right, and teaches them his way. Always is the Lord our living and faithful, for it was to keep his commandments of the For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. We that are our brothers here in the Lord, we will instruct them in the way they choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord provides and loves your hearing. He makes his salvation unto them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Our second reading for today is taken from the second chapter of Acts. You'll find it on page 883 if you'd like to follow along. Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under the earth. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazing and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I, have, what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this morning comes to us from John, the seventh chapter. Glory to the Lord. I'll be reading John 7, 37. Through 39 on page 867. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later received. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not been yet glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Ah, oh, grace and peace. For our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, we can call this weekend an overload, can we? I mean, being the first weekend of summer, as it's called, there are an array of activities to entertain us, even more than we feel we're obligated to attend. I mean, with clearance sales at the stores and other weekend stuff that has nothing to do with Memorial Day, we kind of forget the reason. As I say, it can be overwhelming. But I pray that we'll remember there's more to this this whole world, this whole life, than what the world seems to tell us. And what I want to talk about this morning are a couple of things that are, well, in my books, a little more important than all the camping and all the sales and all the Memorial Day stuff we've tied to. And I guess that's because I hope I have my priorities in order. It's, it's just who I am. But first and foremost today, I want to talk about what today is this year of all years, the day of Pentecost. See, this doesn't always happen on Memorial Day, but it's really a fitting, a fitting togetherness here. <coughs> so that's why we're red today in colors, because that's what the, the church talks about, the red, the spirit coming down. See... Pentecost is the day that after when Jesus gave, it, gave his life for us on the cross. He sent his Holy Spirit as our counselor. As I always say, the third part of the equation. See, he said the next step of our of our of our plan. A counselor to guide us, to guide us walk. To always be with us through all of our trials, through all of our joys, through all of everything that goes with us. 
You know, this is like we prayed in our prayer of the day. We, we thank Him for sending His Spirit to us. Now, something I want to kind of point out is that Pentecost, and as they say in the world, they don't always fall on the same day because Pentecost follows the church calendar. Memorial Day follows the world day calendar, doesn't it? So it's rare. But the meaning of the day of Pentecost never changes. The Spirit is with us. Never forget that. And as our readings talk, as we know, with the knowledge of that, we can face anything that comes at us. For we know Jesus Christ, our Lord, is still with us. It's in a supernatural way. In a way that we can't put our hands on. In a way that we can't see. In a way that none of us can truly understand. But that's the best part of faith. There's things we can't understand and we don't have to understand we don't want to understand. Faith is faith. It's giving up some of our, our need to know and just follow No, as I say, that's what faith entails. Believing in something we can't explain. But you know what? That's why it gets forgotten in this world, too. When we don't see it on our phones, we don't see it on TV or in the newspaper. When we can't put a definite, this is how it works on it, we don't talk about it very much. And that's the hard part. When we don't talk about things, it gets forgotten, it gets lost. And it gets kind of put on the back burner. So that's why buildings like this are so important. That's why church and coming together to talk about the Bible and to teach our kids the truth. To teach our kids about those things that we don't seem to talk about in, in everyday talk. That's why it's so important. See, otherwise, they'll forget too. And when they forget, then generations lose it. Our psalm, verse 1, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. Those words, those simple words will lose their meaning if we don't explain it to our kids. They'll become just words because God will become just a word. Think about that. If they don't understand who God is, why would they say, in you, Lord, my God, I'll put my trust? It's really that simple. But then again, for those who understand that verse, those who have been taught by, as I said in our announcement, by those people that have left us, not just in our in our wars and our veterans spots, but in our parents spots. Those who are who have taught us what our Lord and God is about. It changes who we are, doesn't it? For no we're no longer we're no longer afraid of all the things in the world. Or the trials we face. Because we know what it means to say, in you, Lord, I put my trust. So I want her to repeat it with me, just for fun. Let's say this together. In you, Lord, Lord my God, I put my trust. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful statement. When we say it with an open heart, when we say it with all of our heart, it changes who we are. And that's why this year it's so cool to tie it in with the other part of our weekend that I think is so important. Memorial Day. The last Monday of, of May. Of course, we're Sunday. But as we remember those men and women who gave their lives for a cause, for freedom. You know, maybe ponder. They really don't know what's going on today, do they? Think about that. 
Memorial Day. Oh, sure, there's some that served after the day was was initiated, was dedicated as far as a government holiday that knows happening. But they, they're really not a part of it. It's not for them to feel glory, is it? It's kind of an odd way to look at it, isn't it? But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women that we're remembering today that really get nothing out of this. So why do we do it? Well, it's simple. So like I said, it's like remembering Pentecost. It's for our future generations. It's for our now generations. It's so we don't forget the hardships and the sacrifices that those people did, that what they went through when they died for us. It's for us not to forget what they did for us. Not to honor them, but for us not to forget. Yeah, it's a big deal. And that's why I say it's kind of cool what's happening all together today. Remember the spirit coming. Remember our loved ones. It's all part of remembering and carrying it on. No, I got to put another thought in my heart this when I was writing this. Those men that gave their lives in the war, why did they do it? Because they were told to? Mm. There were a whole lot of them were told to that went north, Canada. There were a lot that skipped out. But the ones that went and did it, the ones that went and fought, why did they do it? It's because of love, right? A love for a cause for freedom. A love for their fellow man. And it made me think of Jesus. Why did he go to that cross? Did he have to do that? No. He didn't have to go either. Yeah, his father told him that, you know, this is what you got to do. But he could have said, you're on her. You've heard me say that before. But he didn't. Out of love and respect for what was truly right, Jesus went to that cross knowing all full well that it was going to be hard. That he could die doing it. Jesus already knew he was going to die, didn't he? So you take our veterans going to battle. They were at the same level of Jesus. Never get me wrong. But when they got on those ships and them boats, they went into that battle, they knew that they could die. And I guarantee you, a lot of them knew they were going to die. But they still did it, didn't they? Because of their love. They had the heart of Jesus. They had the spirit of Jesus in them to say, we've got to stop evil. We've got to stop this somewhere. So it doesn't keep going. Does that make sense to you? How, that, how Jesus really ties into us, into our lives, and we follow him and love him? And a lot of those men going into battle knew that it was okay because whatever happened, God had them. Because they put their trust in the Lord. Yeah. It all really it all really can tie together so simply when we think about it. Now, of course, Jesus died for all mankind. To cover the effects of sin, the sin that caused that war, that causes all our wars and, and disagreements. He died for every one of us to have a way to heaven. Our veterans remember today. They died to give us away from freedom. A lot smaller than what Jesus did, but still, they died for us. That courage is what we remember today. That courage is what we have to instill in our kids. 
that if we truly love each other, then we'll give our all for it. We can't just keep shoving it off to somebody else. No, we, we don't get heaven on the blood of our backs. That's very true. But I guarantee we live a pretty blessed life because of their sacrifices. Just like Jesus doing what he did on the cross, if our vets wouldn't have done what they did, we wouldn't be sitting here where we are today. Yeah. It makes that really cloudy mess of a picture kind of just pretty simple, doesn't it? And again, that's why our generations need to be reminded. That's why we got to keep telling the story. we got to keep telling our young people what happened. No. We have a generation right now that's losing the knowledge of Jesus. They're losing the knowledge of his sacrifice on the cross. We've quit telling them how he died to stop the effects of sin on our bodies and our futures. They're losing the knowledge that today is the day of Pentecost, the day the Spirit came to teach us, to counsel us, to give us something to fall back on when our whole life gets so tough that we don't know what to do. That we can go into a quiet place and just say, Lord, I put my trust in you. You will, you will help me through this. You will help me find the way. It is easy. That doesn't happen quick sometimes. But with our faith being strong, we know it's going to happen. No, as I was, as I was trying to finish this up, I was thinking to myself, you know, it'd be nice to say that. Someday everybody in this world is going to follow the Lord, follow His Word, follow His example. And someday we won't ever need to fight another war, will we? Yeah, that was a good thought. But the problem is the Bible tells us it's going to get worse before it gets better. Bummer, ain't it? Yeah. If we truly look at it, we have to admit to ourselves that the fight's never going to be won until Jesus comes back and fixes it. But as believers, we don't have to worry because we know that we have a plan. We have a path. We have a way to heaven through our Lord and Savior. As I said in my blog, Jesus didn't die to give us heaven. Jesus died to give us a way to him. That's what it's all about. See, we aren't given anything that we ever do anything well with. It's when we have to work our way through it, when we have to grasp it, when we have to be part of it, that we understand it. And that's what faith is all about. I can say, here, I give you faith. Yeehaw! Until you grasp it, until you work through it, until you go through the sorrows and the pains, and you see the joy, and you see the, you see the outcome, it'll never work. And that's what the Spirit's here for, to help you through. So as we commemorate our Lord and Savior giving us the Spirit today. As we commemorate the Spirit in our veterans, they gave their all to give us freedom. I hope you can see the connection and how the Spirit is truly in us. Because if nobody would give themselves for us, where would we be? If everybody was, I'm doing it for myself for number one, you're on your own. We have a mess. But the Spirit puts in our heart, I'm going to help you 
and you're going to help me. We're going to get through this together. That's so hard. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a problem. Let your Heavenly Father, I thank you for, for bringing the thought that Pentecost and Memorial Day all come together in the same way that it's led by the Spirit. The Spirit of truth, the Spirit of love, the Spirit that your Son gave us to tell us to love each other and to help each other. And when we look at it that angle, we see that those that are evil that are doing it for themselves and don't care about others is where evil is. And they reject the Spirit. Heavenly Father, continue to help us watch and listen to our counselor. When times get tough, help us never to reject or tell them to go away, but to say, give me more help because I need it. Our place in heaven is there. Our plan and our way is set. All we have to do is listen to the guide. Help us to just humble our hearts and have peace in knowing that it'll all be okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you continue to be our God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.